A polar expedition? In space? The Flat Earthers will be losing it over this one. Four humans are about to embark on a first-of-its-kind mission to orbit the poles of Earth. The FRAM-2 mission, launching as soon as Monday, March 31st, will be circumnavigating the globe from low Earth orbit over the Arctic and Antarctica. It's another human spaceflight mission, and we're amped! So welcome to Today in Space. Buckle up, and let's dive in. Thanks for joining us. All right, for a little bit of context, FRAM-2 is the first human spaceflight mission over the Earth's polar regions, where an all-international crew of four will launch on a Falcon 9 in a Crew Dragon spacecraft from Launch Complex 39A in Florida at NASA's Kennedy Space Center. FRAM-2 should have three launch attempts within a three-hour launch window, utilizing a 90-degree circularized orbit with an estimated T0 to be at 9.46 p.m. Eastern Time as of this recording on March 29th. We'll be going live on social media for a launch hangout, so make sure to follow us on YouTube at Today in Space, Instagram at Today in Space Pod, TikTok at Today in Space, and X at El Greco, that's my personal account, that's E-L-G-R, the number three, C-O. We're going to have a good time, jump in the chat, say hi, and let's get excited for this, and we'll hang out. But back to the mission, FRAM-2 gets its name from the original FRAM ship that first reached the Earth's polar regions in the 1800s as an homage to honor the adventuring spirit of early polar explorers, and this crew will be doing the same for orbital polar exploration here on Earth. To me, this is as close as we can get to a Star Trek future in these times. These four adventurers are becoming astronauts in order to circumnavigate the planet in a spaceship to spend almost four days over the Arctic and Antarctic. They will be conducting 22 science and research experiments while they're up there. Just like the Inspiration4 and Polaris Dawn missions, these are citizen astronauts on the adventure of a lifetime and sharing it with the rest of us. NASA's not leading these missions. It's actually a wealthy individual spearheading this and paying SpaceX for their human spaceflight services and bringing along others for the ride with them. This is one of the few examples of wealth being used for something other than profit, like philanthropy and adventure. So let's talk about the crew. It is a human mission after all. Crew member one is the Commander Chun Wang, who is an entrepreneur and adventurer from Malta. From an early age, Chun dreamed of both exploring the polar regions of the Earth and traveling to space. And in his pursuit of this goal, he began exploring and learning more about both frontiers. He selected a crew of international adventurers that he met through these pursuits and is eager to complete this historic mission. Crew member two, the vehicle commander, Yannicke Mikkelsen, is a Norwegian film director and cinematographer specializing in fringe technology that includes creating next generation technology for movies shot in remote and hazardous environments like the Arctic, ocean, aviation, and in space. In 2019, Yannicke served as a payload specialist on the record-breaking polar circumnavigation flight one more orbit mission in celebration of the 50th anniversary of Apollo 11. She's an experienced storyteller and looks forward to utilizing technology to share the polar region with the world. Crew member three, the vehicle pilot Rabia Roge, is a robotics researcher from Germany, currently pursuing her PhD in Norway. She has always been fascinated by extreme environments and studies them to understand the current limits of our world and learn how to push beyond them. Her work spans unique topics and include leading satellite missions to ocean robotics in the Arctic. Crew member four, mission specialist and medical officer Eric Phillips, who's an Australian professional polar adventurer and guide who has completed numerous ski expeditions to the North and South Pole. He's the co-founder of the International Polar Guides Association and co-creator of the Polar Expeditions Classification Scheme, which has earned him international recognition and respect. So it's really cool to see these specialized humans, right? They're adventurers. They're really focused on harsh environments and the polar regions specifically, and they get to be on this mission orbiting around. On its first try, it really ties it right down to the Earth-based polar expeditions. So I'm excited for this crew and see what they do up there in orbit. Now let's talk about the mission, what's actually happening. You know, FRAM2 has two main goals, to be the first crew to view and capture the Earth's polar regions from low Earth orbit and to conduct research to help advance humanity's capabilities for long-duration space exploration. Exploration. Because aside from the Apollo missions and these private missions from SpaceX and the International Space Station missions, we're not doing a ton of other human 
long duration missions, or at least NASA has a very specific scope. And so these other missions help add on to that. And I'm sure they worked with people at NASA and the other researchers to figure out which missions would be the best to help push forward that research, at least the previous missions have, like Inspiration4 and Polaris Dawn. Now for the science, there are 22 science and research experiments that will be performed for almost four days, which is the whole duration of this mission. But we're gonna talk about two of our favorites. If you wanna learn more, you can go to f2.com, which is the official website for this mission. But these are my two favorites. The Solar Max mission is where the Fram 2 crew, in collaboration with the University Center of Svalbard, will film aurora-like phenomena to create an open source database of aurora photographs for researchers and citizen scientists. And according to the Fram 2 press release, the crew plans to study green fragments and mauve ribbons of continuous emission comparable to the phenomena known as Steve, or Strong Thermal Emission Velocity Enhancement, which has been measured at an altitude of approximately 400 to 500 kilometers above Earth's atmosphere. And we'll also be digging into these missions more as it's happening next week, so definitely make sure to check that out. And the Blue Marble Project is my other favorite mission here. Now, the crew of Fram 2 is passionate about inspiring and helping young people experience space. So in collaboration with Utibu, the Blue Marble Project will have the Fram 2 crew answer 12 questions from students in Europe while they are in space. They'll record the experience in space and the final production will allow the students to see themselves floating next to an astronaut, which is pretty cool. And look, anything to inspire the younger generation to reach for great heights like these adventurous missions is going to help them land somewhere in between and inspire them to help make a better world for themselves and the rest of us. And if anything, just to love what they're doing. And that's it for our Fram 2 mission review. If you have any questions about the mission, let us know. We'd be happy to dig in deeper for you and learn along the way together. Yeah, this podcast is mostly me learning stuff. So it's not like I knew this ahead of time every single time. It comes with research and learning about stuff. And that's, I think, why I sound so, so excited when I'm doing podcasts is because literally I'm learning with you. And again, we'll be doing the Launch Hangout live on Monday or whenever launch day happens. But right now it's planned for March 31st, 9.46 p.m. Eastern time. So we'll be burning the midnight oil here on the East Coast. Come say hi in the chat and bring your questions and we'll do live Q&A while we're hanging out there but there's no pressure just come and have fun and we'll watch these astronauts take flight and embark on a once in a lifetime adventure so bring your curiosity make sure you follow us online to get updates when we go live we're on youtube at today in space instagram at today in space pod tiktok at today in space and x at el greco it's my personal account that's e-l-g-r the number three c-o subscribe to the podcast on youtube spotify and apple podcasts and make sure to like the video that's it, folks. Thank you for joining us. This video is brought to you by AG3D Printing, which is our 3D printing lab where we are bringing ideas into reality one 3D print at a time. And we also have the Part Detective, which is your way to help solve those mysteries. Whether you want to learn about the mysteries we're solving at our blog at ag3d-printing.com, we did one where we put an NFC chip inside of a business card to make it smarter and maybe better. And we've got another one coming up where we're doing some home improvement items around our house instead of just buying something generic at something like an Amazon or Walmart. But we think there's a mystery in every single part. Actually, there's multiple that you got to solve before you actually get a good part. But if you're into 3D printing, you want to learn more about 3D printing, go to ag3d-printing.com. Follow us on Instagram at ag3d printing. You can check out our James Webb Space Telescope, which is available now online. You can check it out, $75, and you can get your very own James Webb Space Telescope model. And then we've also got the Starship Rocket Pen and the Blue Origin New Glenn Pen available on our Etsy store, ag3dprinting.etsy.com. That's our Today in Space merch. That's how you can help support the podcast, but without having to pay for anything. Just like and subscribe. That's free and helps a ton. Now, before I start sweating in this outfit, because it is spring, we're going to call it for this episode. Thanks for joining us. Spread love and spread science. We'll see you on the next episode of Today in Space. See ya.